Hi, this is an example problem from chapter 21. It has to do with uh, the forces, magnetic forces on current carrying wires and the torque exerted on a current loop that's immersed in a magnetic field. Pause for a moment so you can read the question. All right, so for this problem, we're given this loop here. We're told it's got 75 turns. That means there's actually 75 different wrappings. We only see like four here, right? But really there's 75 there of the wire wrapped. And uh, we know what the current is throughout the entire uh, section there. All the wires got a current 4.4 amps. We can see the directions, right? Um, and it's immersed everywhere within a uniform. In other words, a constant magnetic field that's directed in the direction of the positive y-axis has a magnitude of 1.8 Tesla. Um, first thing we're going to do is determine the magnetic force on the wire segment that has the current in the minus z direction. So plus z being up in this direction, uh, minus z is going to be going down. And so this is the one here, uh, minus z direction of the current. So we want to look at that segment of wire. To calculate the magnetic force on a segment of wire, a current carrying wire immersed magnetic field, this is similar to the one we did for charged particles moving in a magnetic field. The charged particles now, they're just the uh, positive conventional charges flowing in the current. And the equation is similar. It's equal to uh, I L B and sine theta again. Now uh, we want to go ahead and focus on a little point here, uh, say maybe right there. Uh, the current is going down. We can see the magnetic field is always in this direction. And uh, we're going to use the right-hand rule to get the direction of that force. But before we do it, let's get the magnitude. So the current here, it's 4.4 amps. Again, I want to just be careful to stay in SI units, so I'm going to end up in newtons. The length of this, uh, we can see that the section of the wire there, it's a square. And, uh, and it's not a square, it's a rectangle, but so the... the uh, Side's going to be 0 0.7 meters. Uh, the magnetic field strength, we said, is 1.8 Tesla. And what's this angle here, sine theta? Well, we can see what it is. It's actually going to be 90 degrees, right? And we know that sine of 90 equals 1. So we're going to get an answer here. five point five four newtons of force now what's the direction to do that we're going to bring in our right hand rule number two so we brought in a hand and the right hand rule number two works just the same with current as it does with charged particles because current's just a flow of charged particles um, in this case we've got the magnetic field in the direction of the fingers towards the positive y-axis we've got the current going straight uh, down to the negative z-axis direction and uh, the palm will point the direction of the force and since current is always taken to be positive we don't need to worry about any negative signs or flipping the force direction from the palm here so if we go ahead and lay this guy over in the directions that we see we see that there's going to be a force that kind of pushes in the plus x direction here, right? That is the uh, direction of the force on that segment of wire. And so there's the force, magnitude and direction exerted on that segment of wire. Now it's interesting to uh, go ahead and think, well, what would, uh, what would the forces be on the other segments of wire? Um, for this one, all we're doing is changing the direction of I. We're going to flip the hand upside down, essentially. So we're going to get a force in this direction. I'm going to go ahead and so it'd be kind of like a positive x-axis here. There's your force. This one we saw negative x-axis for the top. Here's the current direction's bottom, right? Turns out if we uh, look at those ones, we're going to get, uh, let's see, towards me. I'm going to have a force that goes up if I apply the right-hand rule here. And I'm going to have a force that goes down if I apply the right-hand rule here. 
for that segment. And so you can see that the up and down force is going to cancel for the top and bottom segments of wire, but the other ones, they are going to produce a torque on the current loop that's going to try to get it to align into the XZ plane. So it's going to want to swing around in that direction. Um, let's go look at part B here. So what is the uh, magnitude of that torque that's going to be exerted on the wire because of those forces? Um, well, we can go ahead and calculate it here. There's a formula that we can use for the net torque uh, due to uh, a loop in a magnetic field. So that torque, it's going to be equal to this. It's Ni, the current, A. And uh, this is the um, what we call the magnetic moment here. where n is the uh, number of turns, so here's your n. Uh, I is the current, here's your I, we already know. And A, A is the area, so if I kind of think of a, let's go ahead and uh, maybe use a blue here. And we'll uh, make this kind of uh, shaded. But what's the area? That's the area of the, uh, of this, the uh, current loop, the interior area that that rectangle makes. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, write down the rest of this equation, right? So that's the uh, magnetic moment multiplied by the magnetic field B multiplied by sine of this angle phi, and we'll show how, how to uh, determine what phi is, is uh, what that angle phi is in a second here. So to determine phi, I'm going to go ahead and take a bird's eye view. Basically, imagine that you've got an eyeball up here. And you're looking straight down from uh, the z-axis, straight down to the top of the loop. It's going to look like this. So here's the uh, wires on the top of the loop, right? These wires here. And we're looking straight down, and we know the magnetic field points in this direction. There's your B. Now I'm going to draw a second vector. I'm going to use green. And I'm going to draw this that so that it's perpendicular to the surface of the loop. Okay? Phi is this angle. That's the definition of phi. It's the angle between a vector that's normal. We usually write this as little n because it's perpendicular or normal to the loop surface. And uh, the angle it makes with B, that's the angle in the torque. And uh, if you just release it, that normal N vector, it's going to want to go ahead and just rotate to align with the B field. And again, again, so imagine here's your B field, here's your, your normal vector. It's going to want to go ahead and rotate like this, just like we said before, so that this guy rotates to align with B. Uh, now to, to figure that out, well, we know that this one here, this thing is equal to 30 degrees, right? Which means, sorry, not 30, 35 degrees, which means phi must be equal to uh, be 55 degrees. So now we've got all the information we need to go ahead and calculate that net torque. 75 turns of wire, 4.4 amps of current. The area, well, that's going to be 0 0.7 meters times 0 0.5 meters. Again, looking at this, that's the area, right? Side times side of a rectangle. And the magnetic field strength, 1.8 Tesla, and finally, sine of the angle phi, 55 degrees, we'll come up with a value for the torque. I get a number 170, and uh, since I'm in SI units, I'm just going to remember that the uh, SI unit for torque is newtons times meters. So that's the magnitude of the torque that that current loop is going to experience. Now, uh, in part C, we're asked, state whether the 35 degree angle will increase or decrease. Well, we've already seen that it's going to rotate 
to align that side with the uh, x-axis and therefore it's going to be increasing, right? So just to finish up here for part C, uh, the torque will cause the 35 degree angle to increase.